Hello all. I am Archana Guruzwali, Assistant Professor, Computer Engineering Department at AISS NS Institute of Information Technology, Pune. Okay, so in this video, in, we are going to discuss the techniques to determine the project duration. Two techniques are there: the forward pass and backward pass. So in this video, we'll give, discuss the forward pass, and the next video we'll discuss the backward pass. So first of all, we'll start with the forward pass. So what is the forward pass? Is it? So forward pass is basically a technique to move forward through the network diagram to determine the project duration and finding the critical path or free flow from the project. So basically we are moving from the uh, forward in the network diagram to find out the critical path or the free flow of the project and to find out the different time lengths. So when we are saying the critical path, critical path is the longest sequence of activities uh, right from the start of the project till the end of the project. And the float means basically it is a measure uh, of the amount of time an activity may be delayed uh, without delaying a succeeding activity, we can say, or the whole project finished it. Okay, so to begin with the forward pass process, determine a project start date. So when we are going to start a forward pass process for any project, for any set of activities, we need to first know or we need to assume a project start date. It can be when day one, or any particular date, but we, we should have the project started to begin with uh, this particular forward pass. So in forward pass, we need to be always start from the first activity that is from the left to right. And in forward pass, we need to deal with the two timelines of activity. And these two timelines are called as the early start and early finish. So early, stands, early start stands for the ES and early finish is the ES. Okay, so before moving ahead, we'll see this node structure. You can see here, this is the node structure. Uh, for this node structure, we are going to carry out the uh, forward pass. Means each activity will be displayed like this. Each activity, for each activity, we will have a node like this. Okay, so here we'll see, understand this node structure exactly what is that. So B is what here, the activity name, or write the full description about the activity here. And this 10 is what? This is the duration of the activity, means how much time the activity is going to take to completion. And here, the four more fields are there. So first one is ES and second one is EF. So in the first row, these two fields, we are going to complete in the forward pass. Okay, ES that is early start, ES, EF that is early finish, and LF that is a late start, and LF that is a late finish, which we are going to uh, find out its values during the backward pass. Okay. First two values during the forward pass and the last two values during the backward pass. And you can see here the forward pass is moving from left to right, whereas backward pass is moving from right to left. Okay, so here first we'll see what is the early start and early finish. So early start basically represents the early start of an activity considering the dependency preceding task. So if an activity is having more than one predecessor, dependency predecessor basically, then early start will be the highest early finish of the dependency task. So means if the activity, any particular activity is dependent on more than one activity. So in that case, we have to consider the highest early finish of the immediate predecessors. Okay, so early start is equals to maximum EF value from the immediate predecessor. And now what is the early finish and how, basically how to calculate it? So in order to calculate the early finish, we use the forward pass, means moving from early start towards right, to come up with the early finish of the particular project for the particular activity and then for the particular project. So early finish is equals to ES plus duration. ES stands for the early start plus duration. So once we know the early start date, date plus the number of uh, days it, the particular activity is going to take, that is the duration. So we can find out the early finish. So if the early start is a day six for the particular activity and the duration for the activity is 10 days, then early finish will be calculated as six plus 10 is equals to 16 days. So uh, this particular activity, it indicates that this particular activity can be finished at earliest by the day 16. Okay, so that is the early start and early finish. Now we'll see uh, the how to find out, how to calculate the early start and early finish for the specific example. So here on this slide, you can see the specific example is given here. This is the table which contains the set of activities, list of activities, the predecessor for those activities and the duration for each activity is given over here. And for this particular activity details, here is a network diagram plotted. Okay, now for this example, we'll carry out the forward pass. Okay, node structure we have already seen. So here we'll go. This is the same example is here. You can, it is here for your reference. 
So for this example, we'll carry out the forward pass. We already discussed the node structure. So the same, this same diagram, whatever the network diagram is here. So this same diagram is drawn over here with the different network node structure. Okay. So here the node structure we already discussed that is the activity name and the duration. And in this forward pass, we have to calculate the early start and early finish for all these activities. Okay, so we we'll start with the first activity. So here there is no start date is not given to the first activity. So we'll assume it as a zero. So here the early start for the first activity is assumed as a zero. So how to calculate the early finish? By adding this to the duration. Zero plus five is equals to five. So early finish will be the five. Early finish is five for the activity A. Okay, now the activity B and activity C is dependent on activity A. Okay, so for activity B and activity C, we can take this five, that is early finish of the predecessor. Early finish of the predecessor will give a, will act as a early start of the next activity. So for B, the early start is five. C also the early start is five. Now we need to calculate the early finish. So five plus this duration, that is a seven. So early finish will be the 12th day for the activity B. Now we'll calculate for the C. So for C, this early start plus this duration, 5 plus 4, that is 9. So the activity C can be finished at earliest by the day 9. Okay. Now we'll see here uh, for the activity C, activity C acts as a predecessor for two activities, activity E and activity F. Okay, now we'll calculate the early finish and early uh, start for both of these activities. So for E and F, the early fin early start will be the early finish of the predecessor. So predecessor ka early finish can early finish is what? That is a nine. So this will take as the early start for the activity E as well as for the activity F. Okay, now calculate only the early finish. So nine plus three is equals to twelve. So early finish for the activity E is twelve, and nine plus five is fourteen. So fourteen is the early finish for the activity F. So we have calculated. Now we'll go to the next activity that is the D. So D is activity which is dependent on the activity B. So once B finishes, we can calculate the ES and EF for the activity D. So activity B is finishing at day 12. So this EF can act as a ES for the next activity that is a. So for activity D, the early start is day 12. Day 12 plus duration that is a 10. So equals to 22. So 22 will be the early finish for the activity D. Now, as we have calculated the early finish up to this particular F node, now we'll go for the node G here. So for node G, you can see here, the node G is dependent on the two different activities, activity D and activity E. Okay, it's dependent on the two different activities. So here you can see the early finish for D is 22, early finish for E is 12. So we have to take highest among, among these two. So highest is what? 22. So this 22 will be early start for the activity G. Now, early finish is equals to early start plus this six that is a 20. Okay, now we have calculated for all the activities uh, except the last one. So last activity that is the H. H is dependent again on the two activities, activity G and activity F. Okay, so here again, activity F is finishing as early as by the day 14 and activity G is finishing by as early as by day 28. So we have to take the highest among them again. So we'll take this 28. That is the activity G's EF will act as a ES for the activity H. ES means early start for the activity H. So early start for is 28 for activity H plus duration that is a four is equals to early finish. That is a 28 plus four is equals to 32. That is the early finish of the activity H. So H can be finished, activity H can be finished at earliest by day 32. So this is the forward pass. Here it shows you can see all the nodes are filled up by the forward pass. Okay, so now in the next video, we'll see the backward pass. Thank you.